Well, hello everybody and welcome back. So I wanted to provide more information regarding the high flow experiment. So it is a engineered flood, which starts with the Bureau of Reclamation opening the bypass tubes at the Glen Canyon Dam. So these floods mimic the river's pre-dam flows. Um, it's an experiment and it's a part of the Glen Canyon Dam Adaptive Management Program. So this important program was created to provide organization and integration of dam operations. So this program was created back in 1997. In regards to the high flow experiment of 2023, this isn't the first one. Um, so it proceeds to earlier releases from 96, 2004, 2008, 2012, 2014, and 2018. So with the dam being here, um, these flows affect different areas of the river, such as the last 15 miles of Glen Canyon, the entire length of the Grand Canyon, and a little uh, portion of Lake Mead. So um, these experiments were actually organized by and conducted by multiple agencies, uh, mainly the Bureau of Reclamation, the National Park Service, United States Geological Survey, Northern Arizona University, and the Southwest Biological Science Centers.
So to understand the importance of these flows, you need to understand the Colorado River prior to Glen Canyon Dam and prior to 1963. So the Colorado River used to be called the siltiest river in the world. It carried so much sediment that the river flowed brown. They used to say it was too thick to drink and too thin to plow. Now, prior to the completion of Green Canyon Dam, the Colorado River had experienced high variable floods. So what that means is the floods would fluctuate between low and high. So that carried large amounts of sediment through the Grand Canyon, which maintained the sandbars pretty much. Since the completion of the dam in 1963, relatively little sediment is carried into the Grand Canyon. The now controlled river and its average and daily flow fluctuations for power generation have caused sandbar erosion. The river only receives sediment from a few creeks and rivers, such as the Perea and Little Colorado River but mainly gets its sediment from side canyons such as this during flash floods. So we're gonna step back in time and see for ourselves how much sediment was actually in the Colorado River and to also see how it was monitored and gauged during the time period. This is the Colorado River in Utah. At this government gauging station, engineers regularly measure the river's activity. With this container, a sample of the muddy water is taken from the river. This is the decomposed rock, the sediment that was in one pint of Colorado River water. Now each dish is carefully weighed. From the weight of the sediment in these samples, and from the depth and velocity measurements of the river, it was calculated that more than 1,200 tons of sediment were carried past this gauging station on the day these pictures were taken. By making such calculations for all the major rivers in the United States, we learn that they carry about 400 million tons of sediment into the oceans each year. As you can see, the Colorado River is a very changed river. It is a cold, clear, controlled, moving body of water. In that regard, it's important to understand that these experiments are just that. They are experiments to see what can be done with the Grand Canyon's depletion of sandbars. So you can see this map here of the entire length of the Grand Canyon, its entire 276 mile length. So what we have is sandbar monitoring sites. There's 45 of those red guys. Then we also have the transport measuring locations and there's six of those. So those sites are gonna be the main focus and monitoring of the Grand Canyon sediment. So the Bureau of Reclamation increased maize release volume to 14,000 cubic feet per second and 19,000 cubic feet per second. That's what we see in this chart here. Uh, this is anticipation to the snowpack that's up north of us.
Well, I hope everybody's enjoyed the video and learned a little bit more with the high flow experiments and the importance of them in this modern era of the Colorado River. I just wanted to thank also the viewers, the people liking and enjoying these videos, and uh, hope to see you again very, very soon. Have a great day, everybody.